We decided to produce a feature length documentary on the Hittites when we were producing a film on a monument called Mount Nemrut, which is located in eastern Turkey. Uh, as we were doing this documentary on Mount Nemrut, we came across a couple of books and articles which argued that the sculptures and the statues on top of Mount Nemrut were an extension of Hittite art and architecture. The Hittites had a legacy of 25,000 tablets and tablet fragments which uh, were written in the first person so, so that we could get a sense of what the Hittites uh, thought, lived, how they lived and how they wrote those experiences onto tablets. So we knew that we could get a documentary, a personal documentary through the eyes of the Hittites uh, talking about themselves. So rather than produce a detached documentary that just talked about how the Hittite lived and how they fought uh, in the past tense, what we wanted to do was we wanted to transport the audience back in time to the time and age of the Hittites and let the audience experience the civilization on their own to see the Hittite culture at it, as it lived and flourished and to see the actual Hittite kings and queens. So we really wanted this to be a personal experience both for us and both for the audience. So we really tried to look into the personal stories of the Hittites, uh, their lives, their uh, loves, their deaths, their families, uh, their suffering, their wars and we wanted to tell the story through their own words so we didn't want to interfere between them and the audience what we want to be as filmmakers just be a pathway between the Hittites and the audience sort of guide the story of the Hittites in reaching the audience uh, we first started with reading everything that we could on the Hittites and buying books and uh, books and brochures and anything that we could get our hands on the Hittites the next thing that we did was to take a scouting trip to central Anatolia and eastern Anatolia uh, to sort of trace the path of the Hittites, to go everywhere that they went, everywhere that they lived, uh, to sort of get acquainted with the remains of Hittite culture and Hittite cities. Because just reading from the books doesn't give you a sense of the civilization. You also have to see where they lived and how they lived and how they coped with their surroundings other, uh, other than their neighbors. So we wanted to understand uh, how the Hittites coped with the geography and the climate of central and eastern Anatolia. So we took uh, a long and detailed scouting trip to Anatolia. Actually, I, I personally went on five trips to Anatolia at different stages of the production in, uh, in research, before I started, started writing the script, after I completed the script and before the main shoot. So. Uh, this sort of gave me an idea on, on how the Hittites lived and where they lived. So it, it enabled me to understand them as a people even more. The Anatolian landscape where the Hittite li Hittites lived was breathtaking. You know, they lived on top of cliffs and boulders, on mountains, near rivers. And uh, I not only appreciated the Hittite culture and the Hittite people, but, but I also began to appreciate Anatolian geography and the Anatolian landscape which is breathtaking uh, and I tried to understand how this might have influenced the art and lifestyle of the Hittites. Uh, they were obviously people with the necessary means to shape rock, solid rock and to carve a living out of rock and carve houses out of rock and carve uh, reliefs and fragments, statues and fragments out of rock. So uh, this really uh, this uh, ability to shape rock was the first thing that really impressed me uh, about the Hittites and uh, and we also went through all the all the museums in eastern and central Anatolia also in Ankara and Istanbul uh, which have a lot of architectural finds dug up from excavations and we based our reenactment costumes and accessories weapons and and instruments from Hittite daily life on the reliefs and the archaeological finds in these museums. And we sketched uh, everything that had to be reproduced and got the approval of our experts on the style, the color, the shape and the, and the material of these um, accessories. In a project like the Hittites, the most important aspect, I think, 
is the team of scholars because uh, the subject matter is so wide and so detailed that you need a really, really good team of scholars and experts to guide you on the right path, to recommend the, uh, the best books, the best articles, the best locations for you to go research and learn. And I think we were very lucky in that sense because we had the best experts in their fields around the world. We had experts from Germany, Australia, America, England, Holland, and Turkey, we had about uh, 18 experts that advised and consulted with us on this project and they checked the script in, in different stages of production and made revisions and suggestions uh, on the historical content, on the reenactments and really, really had a great amount of input in the film, which I think elevated the film to a much better platform than it would have had been if we didn't have such a good team of experts. Egypt is an integral part of Hittite history because the Hittites and the Egyptians interacted for at least 200 years between 1450 BC and 1200 BC. Uh, they fought against each other, they exchanged wives, they exchanged doctors and then they became really really good friends. They, they too were the biggest superpowers of their age and time. So in order to understand the Hittites, we believe that we really, really had to understand the Egyptians and to search for Hittite depictions in Egyptian uh, temples and walls and art. And funny enough, all the major Egyptian temples and monuments have depictions of the Hittites on their walls. First starting with the battles, then with the peace agreements, and then with the exchange of wives between the two cultures. Uh, actually, they only exchange wives one way because Ramses II married Hattusili III's uh, daughter and the scene is depicted on a wall at Abu Simbel in Egypt. But I also believe that in order to understand the Egyptians better, one has to understand the Hittites because you can't understand Ramses II without understanding his interaction with the Hittites, how this interaction shaped him as a person and as a pharaoh. As I said, Anatolian landscape was an integral part of this project and we wanted to make sure that we were at Hittite locations during all four seasons. So we started our production, actually our first shoot was in winter. As soon as we got news that it was snowing in central and eastern Turkey, we got our crew together and we went there to shoot all the Hittite locations covered in snow. And seeing all these settings and these places where the Hittites lived covered in smoke in this harsh winter sort of made me respect them more because we were freezing with our sweaters and jackets and all this high-tech winter clothing and I tried to imagine uh, 2,000 years ago how actually more than 2,000 years ago 3,000 years ago how these people managed to survive this harsh Anatolian climate which I think is a major difference between the Hittites and the Egyptians because the Egyptians had the sand and the Nile that was uh, and the seasons were almost the same throughout the year but in uh, in Anatolia in Hittite towns the climate and the seasons shifted so severely that it must have been really really difficult for for these people to cope with the weather so they so the Hittites did not only have to uh, protect themselves against their enemies and their neighbors, but they also have had to protect themselves against the climate, the geography. I think this statue is one of the main prizes of the film. This was recently excavated near the Hittite capital uh, in that area and the depictions on the on the vase which is which is really really tall it's about a meter and a half uh, in height uh, these depictions give us an idea of Hittite ceremonies and rituals and because they are almost in three dimensional with with color it gives us a sense of Hittite clothing, Hittite fabric, Hittite colors of the age and period and we really based a lot of our uh, uh, costumes on those uh, vases. 
the Anatolian Museum of Ancient Civilizations and the Istanbul Archaeological Museum in Istanbul were the main, were the two main museums that we did our shooting. Uh, these two museums have about 80% of statues and reliefs that deal with the Hittites. So we spent about a week total in each museum photographing all the reliefs and the statues and the tablets and the vases and the small God statues and we sort of uh, formed a visual catalog of everything on earth in archaeological excavations dealing with the Hittites. Our production team led by Erhan Akgün manufactured about 21,000 props for this film ranging from the really really minute to the big castle gates uh, of Hattusha, the Hittite capital and at various stages of the manufacture, the production, experts came and checked his progress and consulted with him and, and made revisions and made suggestions. So Erhan worked in parallel with the experts and all those experts that couldn't travel to Istanbul, we sent them digital scans of everything that we were trying to produce and manufacture and only after we got their approval that and their uh, saying that we were on the right path that we went into mass production because otherwise it would have been just uh, too expensive for nothing. We have about 13 in interior and exterior sets dealing with the Hittites because uh, as I had mentioned earlier we wanted to create the daily life of the Hittites and it was very important for us to give a sense of the Hittite capital Hattusha because it's a very unique city built on rock and they built these castles and these houses and these buildings on top of rocks and valleys by shaping big boulders and big rock cliffs so i wanted the audience to get a sense of the dimensions and the landscape that hattusha was built on so we decided to build a almost a hundredth uh, scale model of hattusha then we used the model we shot the model and then we uh, composite people and uh, clouds and smoke on top of the model and we intercut that with the actual sets that we built for the production. We have about six kings and two queens in the film as major characters and we really wanted to bring these characters to life so we contacted the best actors and actresses in Turkey to portray these characters. Uh, in terms of acting, I think this is the most difficult type of acting because you don't have a lot of dialogue so you have to express a lot of the feelings and the emotion to your eyes and your small mimics and gestures so we really needed really really good and professional actors who could convey a lot of emotion with little and i think in that sense we were very lucky because our actors really brought these characters to life and fleshed out uh, dimensions to them and we started seeing these kings and queens through their faces and through their gestures I even had a scholar say to me after the premiere in Los Angeles that it was a, a good thing that after 30-40 years of study in the Hittite field he could finally put a face to the kings and the queens and he said that from now on he would only think of the kings and queens as my actors which was sort of like a nice compliment coming from an expert. Unfortunately, the daily life of the Hittites, the common Hittite people, is not really well known because the tablets and the texts have been composed by the royal family or their associates. So we only get a sense of the Hittite common people uh, of phrases between the lines and the Hittite laws. Uh, but we tried to flesh out as much information as we could on the daily life of the Hittites by talking to experts and trying to read the letters of the kings and queens to each other and trying to compare them uh, to the other civilizations of the period, trying to understand them through their neighbors. And uh, Egyptian reliefs and sculptures were a really, really big help in this sense because they really uh, spend a lot of time and space in portraying the Hittites.
War was an integral part of Hittite life. Every year they had at least three or four major campaigns to expand their borders or their or to protect their existing borders. So we really wanted to give a sense of Hittite military, Hittite campaigns, and how this shaped and changed Hittite life and society. So we, we decided to shoot soldiers in march to and from battle at different locations of uh, Anatolia to convey the sense, uh, convey the setting that they had to pass in order to reach the battlefield. It was just not just going to battle and killing people, but they also had to get there and get there well and and prepared. So they sometimes had to walk across 900, 1000 kilometers and then fight the enemy. And we could only show how, how difficult this was by showing the Anatolian landscape. And we took our actors and extras to different locations in Anatolia, to valleys, to cliffs, to mountains, uh, to gorges, to ravines, and shot them uh, as they passed these different locations going into battle. The music of the film was composed originally by Tamer Trai and we recorded the music at Prague uh, with a live orchestra which took us about four days. Uh, I think that recording the music live added a lot to the emotion, emotional context of the film. It really elevated uh, our film to a different level and gave that human aspect to the story that we were so much looking for since the beginning. And I'm really glad that the music turned out to be so good and, and the Prague Orchestra played it so well that I think it really, really, really increased the strength of the film. I think the film would lack a lot if we took this music out. As post-production goes, we did our offline and online editing in Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, which took us about three months and we did all the visual effects and the compositing also also in the same studio uh, ABT studios in Istanbul Turkey and we decided to record the narration the English narration with Jeremy Irons in London uh, he was a pleasure to work with such a professional such a nice guy and he really 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 improved the script I think he read it so much better than what it what was actually on the page and he really uh, made the film better than it was as a script. Uh, we, we recorded the Turkish narration in Istanbul and Cüneyt Trel was our main narrator in Turkish. We also used about 14 or 15 uh, Turkish actors for the other characters. Uh, so we recorded the English narration in London, we recorded the Turkish narration in Istanbul and we did our sound mix at Los Angeles uh, because we wanted to be really able to uh, do a good sound design with a lot of effects because even though this film was a documentary 70% was dramatic scenes so we had to treat those scenes as a feature film to so that it would have a good soundtrack it would have a good sound design so we did all, all our effects building our foley and our surround mix at wood holly studios in los angeles uh, and it was a pleasure to work there as well because uh, ted who's who can be seen on the right of the frame was really really good uh, in matching all the effects and the and the direction of the sound and i think his work really improved the soundtrack of the film I think the film has faults, looking back back on it, I think the film has faults, a lot of things that I would change now, but one thing that I wouldn't change is the soundtrack, especially the sound effects, the sound mix and the original music. Uh, I, I feel really, really good about that. Uh, other stuff, some shots and something, uh, some stuff in the script I would change if I had to go back on it now. Looking back on it, the Hittites was a very, very long journey. A long and difficult journey for all of us who participated in the film. It was by far our most ambitious and biggest project uh, to date. 
and we in trying to produce the film I know that we made a lot of mistakes and we hit our heads to the wall more than once but uh, everything that we learned from this film in terms of history and in terms of production I think this film provided us with a lot of experience that we can carry on to our future films and we made so many good friends and we got to know so many talented people that I look forward to working with them again in the near future and carrying this experience into the next project so that we can produce a film much better in quality and scope.